Well, the struggles are real. The struggles are so real, we're going to take different struggles that we all have, different issues that we have every day of our life. And sometimes we see struggles, and of course, this struggle is stress. Anybody have any stress going on in your life? Raise your hands. Give me an amen if you have some stress going on. Let me give you a definition of stress. A state of mental or emotional strain or, or, or tension resulting from adverse or a very demanding circumstance. Very demanding circumstance. Isn't that a theme song sometimes? It seems like your entire day stinks. You wake up and everything goes wrong. And the things that you're stressing about, the thing that you're looking forward to not doing, totally changes the way that we perceive life. And I made some statistics. I didn't make them. I found these statistics. Traits, characteristics of a stress-prone individual. Now, this is when you start doing the elbows, okay? If this is your spouse, go ahead and start elbowing them. The first one plans your day unrealistically. You're the first to arrive and last to leave. You're always in a hurry. Makes no plans for relaxation. Feels guilty about doing anything other than work sees unforeseen problems as a setback or a disaster, is always thinking about several other things while you're at work, feels the need to be re recognized and overextends because of this. Now, if you feel like all this stuff is stressed out and, and nobody knows what I'm doing and nobody really takes, gives me credit for what I'm doing, it causes more stress. So what do you do? What can you do if you feel like you have these stress-prone criteria within your life. Recognize aggravating aspects of your job and accept them rather than fight them. Just, it's, it's going to frustrate you. Everybody like everything about your job? I like most of my job. There's some, there's some things about my job I don't like. I just have to deal with it. See, when I see Tim Ford, I say, oh, I love everybody about the church except for Tim. So when Tim comes, I just have to calm down. It's not a big deal. You have to love people that are unlovable sometimes. So you just have to do that. Especially in the bowling alley. Tim is, is like bowls his 200 game all the time, and I bowl like a 120, so he beats me all the time. Okay, the second point. Identify your emotional need and find ways to meet them. Identify your emotional need. When you get stressed and there's triggers of why you get stressed, you have to meet that need. Now listen to this one. Practice listening. All the men said amen, but practice listening is more relaxing than talking. <laughs> Practice listening for a change. Okay? Four, be sensitive to change. Since it's coming out, make adjustments. Many people get stressed because of one word, change. How many of y'all like change? There's not a lot of people like to. How many guys like making change? I like changes. I like making things change up. Okay, listen to this quote. God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Sometimes we just have to know that stress is going to take place within our life. There was a character in the Bible, Jesus, that had a very stressful job. Now, could you imagine, for three and a half years, Jesus had people following him like a glass house every place he went. Now, they were not only the ones that loved him, they were the ones that disliked him as well. He could not have time to himself. He was always to the max. He always had people criticizing him. He had people talking to him. He had people wondering why he is doing it and what they were going to do. He was in a glass house, very stressful, and he also knew the end result was going to be death. So Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30, it talks about what we can do when we have a stress-filled life. Now, we could talk about the medical terms. We could talk about taking pills. We can talk about talking about anxieties. But I'm going to tell you what Jesus did. He did five things within his life to calm the stress. It says this in verse uh, 28. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The first thing that he has to understand is, what is your identity? What is your identification? Who are you? 
And Jesus knew what his identification is. He said in John chapter 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of this life. He also said in John chapter 14, I am the way, I am the true, and I am the life. Your identification knows, know who you really are. Know who you are. Many times in stress, people think they know who they are. But stress is caused by the mask that we wear. We try to identify with others, and we try to let other people tell us what to do and how to do it and why we should do certain things. And I just say, stop right here. Know who you are. I love talking to brand new married couples, and they come into the office for marriage counseling, and, and uh, I, I say this on the last session of premarital. I said, this is your day. Bride, this is your day. There may be 20 people that think that they think that they want to do it a different way. But you know what, bride? This is your day. Whatever you want, you get. Nobody can tell you what you need or how you should do certain things. You've made your plans. You're sitting down. And this is exactly what you want. And that's what I, as your pastor, will allow you to have. It is your day. Sometimes when people uh, come into that wedding, wedding rehearsal, they say, I don't like this, or I don't like that, or I don't like this. And I look at the bride, and she says, this is what I want. So I just say, you know what? This is I do this. This is how we're going to do it. This is why we're going to do it. So we can just back down. And they, oh, oh, okay, you'll shut up. Because I want to make sure the bride gets what the bride wants. Identification. Know who you are. But when we first figure out who we are, we have to know that there's a purpose for my life. I am a child of God. I am not an accident. I was put on this earth for a purpose. I am deeply loved by God. I am completely accepted by God. He has a plan for my life, and he says I am valuable. I have significance. In fact, he has said, I want you to hope and care and dream about great dreams. Don't allow the stress of life to deter you from becoming the significant person you have called to be. In, second, or in 1 Peter 2.9, it says, You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. So we have to have an identity. The second thing Jesus did is he had direction. He had direction. He, he was not caught to and, to and fro. He knew exactly what he needed to do. And sometimes we get stressed when we don't know what to do or what's coming up. In John chapter 5, verse 30, I do not seek my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Jesus knew what God's plan was for his life. And one of the ways that, as a believer, that we have to understand, what does God want me to do? We have to have direction within my life. Direction. Know who you are and what you want. What do I want in life? You can't please everybody, so you might as well only try to please the one that, that's important to you. And that person that you're trying to please is God. And when you please God, you will please some people, but some people will never be pleased. Some people will fight you because you're trying to please God. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and he will add all these things unto you. It actually says, Jesus knew who he was trying to please. It was settled the issue of him. He said, I'm going to please my father. And the father replied, this is my beloved son, whom I'm well pleased. He said that the day that Jesus was being baptized. And then when you're talking about direction, you have your identity, you're talking about direction, and then concentration. Concentration. Um, when you're stressed, we have to laser focus our concentration. We can't be all over the place. And I, this is one of my struggles. I, I am an overly stressed individual, and, and all those criteria that I read about, there was like, every one of them in my life. So I get stressed out, and there's times that, that uh, I'm up till 2 o'clock in the morning because my mind just doesn't shut off. Anybody else like that? You just, you're up all the time. And I'm like, ah, just shut. I wish I had a switch. Just to flip that switch, and I don't have it, so I take a pill instead of a switch, and sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't. So concentration. Some people try to get Jesus detoured from his planned schedule activity. When day came, in, in Luke chapter 4, it says, When day came, Jesus left and went to a secluded place, and the crowds were searching for him. And he came to him, and he tried to keep him from going away from there. 
But he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also, for I was sent for this purpose. In other words, they wanted him to do something else. And Jesus said, no, listen, guys, I can't stay here. I have my job to do. I know exactly what I need to do. I'm going to be concentrating on the most important, and that is to do what God wants me to do. The concentration. Focus on one thing at a time. Focus on one thing at a time. When we are stressed, what we seem to do is see what needs to be done. And we look at 5 or 10 or 15 different things, and, and we try to do 5 or 10 to 15 things, and we usually do 5 to 10 to 15 things badly instead of focus on the thing that we're called to do and we're focused on. Jesus was the master of this. He seen that everybody tried to interrupt him. Everyone had a plan B for him. But Jesus also kept the right thing, doing the right thing, and he knew what God told him to do, and he kept his concentration and his purpose. In Luke chapter 19, verse 10, it says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. He had one plan. He said, My job is not to heal everybody. My job is not to do miracles for everybody. My job is to seek and to save those that are lost. That's the plan that Jesus had. That's what God's purpose was. And I would ask the same question to you. If somebody would ask, what is the purpose of the church? What is the purpose of Glenville? If Glenville could be defined to what is its purpose, you could very easily say, well, our purpose is to have a, a good children's ministry, and we want to have a good children's ministry. The purpose of the church is to have great worship, and we want to have great worship. The purpose of the church is to have a facility, and we want to have a facility. But the purpose of the church, the direction and the vision of the church has to be our job, our focus, is to reach people for the cause of Jesus Christ. Period. Now, can we use other things? Absolutely. Any vehicle that we can use in order to get the goal done, we want to use. We want to have a big children's camp. We want, we want to have a big youth camp. We want to have great music. We want all those things. But all those things together for our good is not. But if all those things are to point people to Jesus Christ and what Jesus did to seek and to save those which are lost, if that is our purpose, then we're in God's will. So when we are starting ministries, the first thing that we have to ask is, what's it do? Is it keep us busy or does it point people to Christ? If we start a ministry because it's keeping us busy, then it is not God's will for the church because everything that we do has to be on God's plan and that's to seek and to save those who are lost. He was determined, he was persistent, and he had concentrated efforts on everything that he did. The Bible says this, this, I like this. Early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up and left his house and went away to a secluded place and was praying there. I love what it says in Psalms chapter 46. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Sometimes in order for us to concentrate on what he has for us, we have to take a step back. And the, mo the, the, the time that we are stressed the most is the time that we need to stay away from being busy the most. The time that we are stressed the most is the time that we take a step back and we take that 10 to 15 minutes and we pray and we seek God's face and we say, Lord, I need you to laser focus my intensity into exactly what you want me to be. I want to be determined, but I want to be determined on the right cause and for the right purpose. So after his determination, I believe this is the very important one that we le leave out on, is relaxation. Relaxation. Look at what Jesus said to his disciples. They were busy, and he said this, Come away by yourselves to a secluded place and rest a while. For there were many people coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. I tell you, when we make mistakes... When people fail, when people fall into temptations, when people start drinking and using drugs to hurt themselves, it is because they're stressed and they do not have a, a way to get out of their stress. They cannot relax. There were busy people coming and going. The crowds were getting bigger. Notice that Jesus didn't say, pick, pick up the pace. 
work a little harder. Find, find more people. Do more, do more, do more, do more. Put another shift in. Find somebody else to do this. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. He said, stop. Go to a secluded place and rest. Go to a secluded place and rest. Even in the book of Genesis, this concept was created by God, and he called it the Sabbath. He said six days, but on the seventh day, I want you to rest. I want you to focus on me. I want you to relax your body, your mind, and your spirit, and chill, and put your focus back on what God wants you to do. And when we can understand the Sabbath means rest. Let me tell you, rest and recreation all our life is not an option. Sometimes we work so much, and we lose the focus that we need to have, and our productivity goes down when our stress goes up. Our pro productivity almost falls apart. We work harder to maintain what we should be doing, but if we could just take a break, take a step back, and relax, God can do great things for us. And the last thing he did, his dedication. His dedication. Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The yoke of oxen is a, uh, it's a, it's a, a, a wood instrument, and they would put the yoke upon two oxen, and the oxen would do the pulling. And Jesus is saying, put your worries, your stress, your cares, your fears, your anxieties, put them on me. Let me carry your load. Let me put what you are struggling with on me. He says, come to me who are weary and heavy laden. Sometimes the things that we are stressed out about are the things that are just bogging us down. And we are so tired of carrying the weight that it just causes stress. It causes anxieties. And it causes us fears. We need to give our stress to Christ. Notice the scripture. It's two actually says, come to me and take my yoke. You come to Christ. And when you come to Christ, I want you to take my yoke. Because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I am not going to add more stress to your life. My job is to take the stress off of your life. I want to take the burdens off of you. So often we say, I need, I need it. I, I, I want to get rid of the stress. I need to get rid of my problems. But we don't know how to do it. We're so caught up in the stress and the anxieties of life, we hold on to them and we try to work and say, if we work harder, if I do more, if I can try harder, this thing will go away. And God said, no, 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 no. I am humble. I am meek. Take your stuff and put it on me. And my humility will be transferred to you. My easiness, the way that I walk through life, I am not going to cause you stress. I'm going to cause you peace. Why would you, would you trade your stress for peace? Would you trade your anxieties for humility? That's what Jesus is asking us to do. That's what he did. That's what he modeled for us. He modeled that, and he says, come to me, all of you that are heavy laden, that are beat down, that are burnt out, that are just tired of life, come to me, and let me show you what I modeled for you. What I modeled for you is life is tough. I lived three years, and my end result was going to die on the cross for humanity, and the sins of this world were going to be upon my shoulders, and I knew my end destination is death. But I did what God called me to do. I wanted to seek and to save those which are lost. And now that I have found you, I don't want you to stay in your pain, in your fears, and in your anxieties. I don't want you to be so fearful that you cannot live I want you to come to me, and I want you to take your cares, your stress, your anxieties, and your fears, and your scars, 
and lay them at his feet. And then he says, take my yoke. What that means is, let me do the work. You leave them with me. I'm going to wrap my arms around them, and I'm going to carry them. And I'm going to let you have a life, a life that when you learn how to deal with stress, you give them to me. You can take back, and you don't have to worry. You can learn how to handle life without the stress because you've given the stress and the anxieties and the fears to me. See, that last song that Justin sang was brokenness, being a broken vessel. See, I've used this so many times, but it is so true. We are a throwaway society. We break something, and it's sometimes it's cheaper to go buy something than it is to get something fixed. So we just throw it away. But Jesus is not a throwaway Jesus. When we are broken, he loves us. He fixes us, and he uses us. And sometimes in our brokenness, he allows the fixing, the scars of what he fixed to remain. So people will look at your life as a vessel that had been broken, but is still being used by God. See, we think that if we've been broken, if we have some scars, if we're not the perfect person, then God will never use me. And I would say just the opposite. God will never use us until we're first broken. And once we are broken, once, once we realize I am, I'm just nothing. And God takes my nothingness and creates a beautiful vessel out of my broken pieces. And that's when we talk about stress. We just have to say, there it is, Lord. I'm just going to give you everything. And you promised that if I'm heavy laden, if I'm broken, I can come to you. You are humble. And you will fix, take, and put on your yoke. And you will make my life pleasing to you. I have to be dedicated to allowing you to fix me. I like the word humble. He said, I'm humble. Which means God, he loves us. He knows us. He created us. He's not sticking his finger in your face and saying no. He's opened his arms wide and says yes. He doesn't look at you in, the, in, a, in a way that, oh, I need to be fearful of God. I can't be honest with God because if God knows what I did, he would never love me. Oh, no, no, no. God knows. And he's asking you. He said, he said I want to help you. I want to fix you. I want to forgive you. I want to heal you. I'm humble. That means I'm open. I'm transparent. And I care. So our invitation is very simple. Are you stressed? Do you have junk in your life that you don't know what to do? You don't know how to handle it? We all do. Sometimes it's a learned behavior, and sometimes because of our attitude, because of our action, because that's what we have learned, we become so overworked that we have no idea how to deal with life. And so we just do this and do this and do this, and sooner or later we have to take a step back and say, you know what, I can't do this anymore. I need God to take over. So all of you who are heavy laden, all of you that have stress, all of us needs to give our stress back to God. Let me read this scripture. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Whatever it is, whatever stress you may have, whatever issues you have, take his yoke upon him. Learn of him. He will give you peace and he will give you rest. Will you please stand to your feet? A state of mental or emotional strain or tension resulting from an adverse or a very demanding circumstance. Sometimes life is very demanding. 
Sometimes it's so demanding we don't know what we need to do. We need to give our life, our heart, and our dreams to God. Allow Him to deal with them.